think there's seven rows. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, seven rows of eight for a total of 56 pots in this side. This is the shed novi garden over here is where i have more control over the plants there's not many pollinators there's less wind there's wind block from the shed there um, and it's just where i kind of monitor things a little closer i do a lot of my seedless stuff over here um, trials for example so um, i've got it all planted i've got all the rows the next thing to do is to add the cages you can see them in the grass right there and uh, once i add the cages i'll put the drip system in and we'll get these things going just like the other garden on this first row right here i've got my three colors pepper i've got three of those they're a little bitty but still planted and then i've got celebrity and better boy and those are part of a control um, against a grow comparison and control um, control to see the productivity of my lines uh, by comparison these next two rows that I'm going to compare against celebrity and better boy is brandy bear and brandy bear is an almost finished almost open pollinated I think it's at uh, f7 now and uh, so it's almost open pollinated and um, the Control Celebrity and um, Better Boy are hybrids, so I'm going to grow them in comparison over here in the shed, no weed garden. Right, this row right here is a Brandy Bear crossed back to Teddy Bear, and that's because Teddy Bear has got a little better disease resistance to it and more production, I think, but it's a smaller tomato. The Parthenocarpy in it, though, is not what I'd like to see, so I'm back crossing it to Brandy Bear, which is highly Parthenocarpic. On this row, now I had some extra pots, so that's that's kind of the reason for this row here. And what I did was I, I got a bell pepper, a normal, regular bell pepper, because um, Gino likes bell pepper and, and various things. Um, but we do use the spicy bell, which is a mildly spicy bell right next to it. So I kind of got that to compare and do a flavor test later with. And the rest are Purple Dog Creek times bread, uh, bread to Brandy Bear, um, Cherokee Purple bread to Brandy Bear, and Plan 9 from Outer Space, which is a striped tomato bread to Brandy Bear. So it's the F1 generation. Now I need a couple of those plants to get to the F2. The last two rows here are my dwarf lines. And dwarfism is, it seems to be variable. Um, probably until they're open pollinated. But this is the F3 generation for these two different uh, crossings of mine. One was brandy bear was bred to a dark tomato and a red tomato and these are the f2 f3 generation yeah f3 because i already selected for dwarfism and parthenocarpy but anyway uh some of the dwarfs are really tiny like these here and some of them were taller like these here right next to it and so it's really unusual. It's something that I'm going to monitor and uh, keep my eye on the various, um, I guess you'd call growth habits, how tall and how small they remain. Um, and I can see how they could get micro dwarfs from any dwarf line because the dwarfism seems to vary also um, in the F2, F3 generations. Well, maybe not the F2, but probably F2 and F3. So that's, that's uh, both of these are dwarf tomatoes, next selections, and going to be. And these three are 
compare not comparisons they're well they're how do I put it the parents of a couple others that I'm using as a comparison to what their children look like <laughs> so that's what those three taller ones are that pretty much rounds out what's going on with the what's growing over here and uh, there's going to be some uh, cataloging of different growth types styles which ones to carry forward and all that so this is going to be my fun garden and um, yeah looking forward to it next is to like i said get the watering drip going shouldn't take too long maybe a day and then after i gotta put some form of shade cloth up i think i have an idea for that putting on the cages now you can see i have them sitting next to the containers so i'm in the process of doing that and i will show you how i do it and the purpose of these cages mostly they're tomato cages but really they can encapsulate any plant growing getting bushy and i've used them in many different ways including peppers for the same purpose as tomatoes so they don't they don't escape and fall over and snap uh, cucumbers um, i do a form called uh, cucumber wrapping which is i've also done with tomato wrapping where i just take the cucumber when it comes out a little bit i just wrap it around the outside of the cage right there and each wrap is three feet so just a few wraps and there's not a problem with that i've done with i've done with just about anything melons watermelons squash winter squash uh, just about everything that uh, that i grow i've used these cages and so uh, let me take you and show you what uh, uh, well how i make them and then how i secure them to the pot i've mentioned these many times over the years these are sucralose containers and sucralose is an artificial sweetener and i've got uh, me showing how i did prepared these way back in i don't know 2012 2013 i think i got a youtube video on that but essentially all i did is i cut the top off right here and you can see one right over there and these things are very robust they don't succumb to the sun like your your basic uh, five gallon container but regardless, I, I took, because these are somewhat transparent, if you look down in here, you can see light coming in. Well, it creates an algae if you don't put something over the outside. And I've tried several different things, different wraps. But what I ended up doing that works out real good was purchasing those grow bags, like that one right there, and just covering the outside of it. Now, to get the tomato cage over it, I have one end. Let me see if I got if this one's prepared already um, no it's not but essentially I take and there we go you can see here that the end like this is open I actually go one more <laughs> not really prepared prepared for this was I <laughs> So anyway, sorry for the camera work here. So I take this and I hold it apart like this with two hands and I slide it over the container that already has the uh, grow bag over it so it doesn't tear or rip it. And then I take, let me get one out here. These little four inch zip ties you can get I don't know, it's like $6 for a thousand of them or something like that, it's really cheap. And I secure it here, which brings it together, and then one up a little bit. And what that does is that kind of um, locks it around the container. And this concept can be used with any container. The wire that I use is a two by four, two inches here by four inches wide. Um, hardware cloth hardware mesh pig wire whatever you want to call it i get it from i got it from a tractor supply company um i think i have a video up showing how i made these but for my buckets it was 13 of these all the way around i counted them and then i took wire snips 
and I just took the extra wire, the tail on one side, and wrapped it back around. So that's how I create the cages. And how I secure them, I showed you. A four inch here and a four inch there. And this is what looks like when it's done. You can see a zip here and a zip here. And then at the end of the year when I'm done, I just have little snips here. I snip, snip, and just pull it right off without damaging this much. There get some little holes and stuff in it like here. It's not a big deal. The main purpose is to keep the majority of the algae out. Now right after I get the cages on, I go back and I take the same four inch zip tie here and I take the tag that was in the pot and originally it was in the little two by two inch uh, grow container and then I put it in the pot and then once the cage goes on I put it up here this is so I don't have to stoop down to know what I'm looking at I just glance at it quickly all right I wanted to show you here you may see some flickering I don't know this is a picture of my computer screen but that is near I live very close to Conway Arkansas see here and the temperature right now at 3.53 p.m. is 88 degrees for today, the 1st of June, 2023. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is because I wanted to show you what the containers go through when it's only 88 degrees. Now, that's a really warm for some of you, but that's not even close to our high temperatures. We get above 98 regularly during the summer. And we'll probably start hitting those temperatures, I would say, beginning to mid-July. Here we are, less than two-minute walk. Don't sting me, wasp. To my containers out here, and you can see it is 102 degrees. Well, the sun just came out, so it's probably going to get warmer than that now. And the reason why it's so hot in here, by comparison, 15 to 20 degrees hotter, is because the heat is radiating off of this and it's radiating off, radiating off this soil temperature. And this is what the plants are experiencing. They're experiencing temperatures that are well above the outside ambient temperature. And because of that, and because of the amount of sun hours that we get, especially in the early to late afternoon, uh, the plants are per suffering pretty good. And they just won't do great when they're suffering that much. That is why I've got to add shade cloth. I know many of you may be saying or thinking, yeah, Brent, but you have the gauge in the sunlight, the direct sunlight. That's what's causing it to do that. Well, I've got it completely in the shade now, and there may be some truth to that, but it is later in the afternoon, and it's completely shaded out, and the soil temperature is shaded right there. And what I'm saying is this is probably more comparable to having shade cloth above than ha actually the way it is over here on this side in the sun. So for compromise sake, we can say it's somewhere between 98 and 104 degrees on these containers most days when it's sunny during the early, well, it's still spring, late spring. July, uh, June 21st begins summer, and today is June 1st or June 2nd. Anyway, that's the temperatures. So all the containers have the cage around it and the zip tie affixed, and each one has the label up high where I can see it, just like we talked about. Down below you'll see a tape measure. What I need to do now is separate the rows an even amount, both between the rows here and between the pots. And I'll do it between the pots with the holes in the drip tape. I'll show you how I install that. But in order, distancing is going to be based on seven rows that will go between my shed here from there to there and from all the way across over to the fence so that's way uh, shading will cover the whole plot area so that's what's going to determine how far apart there's going to go so I've got the drip tape down I'm going to find the number of inches and uh, divide it for equal rows as you can see the drip I just turned it on it's starting to flow is complete 
and you may be wondering why it's up top and I'll explain that but this is to the back this is the main line it comes around this to the back so that it doesn't interfere with me walking in and out with the tomatoes mostly tomatoes and you can see that it's dripping up here from the top and here's my fertilizer slash main water and this one is going to the no weed garden for the shed which is the one I just showed you and this one's going out to the main garden and it should do both of them um, there's enough water pressure to do both I know from last year so uh, let's put this cap back on to keep the algae from getting in so why did I put it up top well there's a couple reasons one is so that I can get to the drip without routing it through the cage that ended up being a kind of a pain in the butt um, for setup and tear down last year um, plus I always had to put something on the top from cage to cage to keep high winds and other things from blowing the containers over uh, so without and I used tomato twine primarily and I just ran it straight from there to there so now I'm using the drip line itself as a way to keep it from, um, it doesn't do a whole lot side to side, but it does definitely do it that direction. Um, so I've got the shade cloth uh, set up coming up and I will get a line from this up to the shade cloth support system to keep these will be attached say for example right here and that'll keep going up and that'll keep it from going this direction in high winds and so it really only becomes a problem when the tomato puts on a lot of fruit and it's up the cage by a good bit and what happens is the wind just catches it and it can knock it over and it's done that a couple times so hopefully that'll solve both of these issues now <laughs> that's pretty seeing all them drops falling like that even onto the tomatoes it's, you know I'm, I'm seeing it now as I'm talking to you on the video it's really kind of cool so on the no weed garden on the main garden uh, you remember it's at the bottom of the treadle, trellis cattle panel um, and at here at the top since I'm using as a type of support I have to run the same tomato twine from here down to where it is right now so it's just not beating the dickens out of the plant or the soil and i'll show you how i'm going to do that just want to note this water travels the path of least resistance and you see the water following this here this uh drip line right here the reason why i put the zip ties on is because it catches the zip ties and it follows down the zip ties and so if I put one on either side of the hole then what happened it doesn't matter where the um, it doesn't matter how level the drip line is it'll hit and it'll go down and the same thing is going to happen with the string I'll show you in a bit to further the watering to get more direct with it and um, alleviate some of the pounding from the water drops all the way down I created this and I took old PVC here three quarter inch and I cut it into these size little pieces about an inch wide and I used tomato twine that I cut about five foot in length using these scissors here and then I tied it to with an overhand, I guess you'd call it, um, to this piece of PVC. And that is going to be a weight of sorts. Let me show you what it looks like here. So I drop it in next to wherever I want the water to go. And I can move that anywhere I want. And then I'm gonna wrap it up here around the hole and bring these in closer I'll show you that 
but later on if I want to I can take a piece of um, a tomato or I can take a tomato clip hook it around the piece of PVC and the base of the plant if I want to get actually really precise but I don't think I'll need to so what I'm doing is I'm putting the little piece right next to the plant and I'm coming up here and I'm wrapping it around just so it doesn't look crazy and it creates more area I put that over the hole it's not wrapped tight so it won't block the hole it's almost I've used um, electrical tape to try to block the hole and these things just don't block very easily so I'm, I'm pretty confident that this will be fine um, haven't tested it I'm doing it and videotaping it and if it's successful then I'll show it come back here make sure that this is in place um, the water will follow the path of least resistance down the hopefully this if not I'll adjust it and if it tries to travel this way or this way on the pipe the zip ties will catch it and it'll bead down so I won't lose any water no matter what I do so I've got that down at the bottom I've done several of them this way uh, time wise I make these um, all at the same time I just use one as a template and I just uh, I can make eight of them in about I don't know 30 seconds and then I cut them and then I cut the pieces of PVC that's really quick with using the PVC cutter and um, yeah wrapping them probably takes less than a minute for each one so is it worth it I guess we'll see all right I've completed all the strings to the ground the ground to the bottom of the pot the top of the pot uh, where the tomatoes are are all tied in now I just need to do an operational check and I'm going to wait till it comes on again. It's set every 12 hours, 7.30 in the morning and 7.30 at night. It runs for 10 minutes. I think that was in the last video. And so while I'm waiting on this to do the operational test, you may see some EMT sitting here and some little uh, fittings there. And that is going to be the shade cloth uh, support. The primary support and it's going to go from the fence over there about halfway uh, well it's going to go to about the length of this which is 10 foot piece of EMT and then from there I'll attach it behind me to up here with some 550 cord so that's that's um, going to be the shade cloth um, support i guess is what you'd call it that and uh it's going to rest on it uh take off a little bit of the weight the shade cloth doesn't weigh much i'm also going to use these old it was part of a trellis system i'm going to reuse those those are going to be the middle supports going up these are these on the ground will be the the bottom or the, excuse me the top of the shade cloth and then the shade cloth is going to come out to about right in here somewhere and then I'll go from here to the shed with the 550 cord. Um, I've got a base here. That's why the 4x4s are here. That is going to screw in to support the brace going up where it won't move. That's just left over from the fence replacement. Let me see what else. I had used the shade cloth last year. I had two, I think they were 12 by 20 uh, pieces of shade cloth and I used one initially because I saw the plants were suffering and then they end up getting another one and use that and what I covered was you know those RV little shade um, not tents but they pop up and they're a little 10 by 10 um, little gazebo type pop-up thing that people set their chairs underneath when they go camping sometimes Anyway, I had a couple of those, and I just put shade cloth over it instead of the solid, and that worked really good. But uh, the reason why I'm telling you that is because I want something a little better, and these little fittings down here that I've got, they'll allow me to take it down really easily, and I'll reuse those uh, gazebo slash RV um, 
shade cloth pieces that I used last year. Repurposing. Repurposing as much as possible. These little fittings I've got here are from Maker Pipe. If you want to Google them and see what they're about. But uh, essentially they're, you can use their fittings to make just about anything you can imagine. And so I've used it for a couple different things now, but I'm going to use it for this structure. Let me carry along as I go. And we have water. I want to show you. It's You can't hardly see it. There's a little bit of dripping going on, but it's still following more or less this down. And this one, you can't even see it getting to the bottom there it's just kind of falling right off and not everyone's going to be perfect got the structure going on that's another video coming um, but it may need a little bit of an adjustment like that that one's going now this one wasn't following the string too well so maybe we need to fiddle with it there you go this one's starting to work now not quite as good as I'd like I'll come back to it um, but you can't hear the dripping hardly anymore because most of them are doing what they're supposed to do this one's not this one is this one is and it's following the string down which is what I wanted so I'll go through here off camera and I'll tweak that there's no need to bring you back I can tell it works perfectly well, just like this one here, falling the string down. It's a little aggressive, so the water's wanting to jump off the string, but uh, what it's doing is it's directing it um, to the location. You can do this, uh, and you can move this anywhere you want away from the plant. It still follows the, the uh, string down. So if the plant was over here, we could put it directly on the plant, um, even if it's at a different spot instead of vertically straight up and down. So, yep, I consider this a success, and the water and fertilization is now complete after I make these minor adjustments. All right, I've got the top frame. Each one of these has a leg that's going to go down which will raise it and that'll essentially finish it finish the build uh, for the part that's supported which is these EMTs here let me go down here and show you the fittings are just the fittings um, but I took these are EMT clamps and I took a small portion of EMT and I used one of the maker pipe fittings there and it's loose now so it can go up and down but the screws are holding it in place and those are just uh, decking screws that are about I don't know inch and a half long maybe two inches long so that's it now I need to put the verticals in to raise this up so I'll have a nice uh, area that's above my head that's shaded so I've got the EMT structure up and I've also put up some um, tomato twine uh, to as an anti-droop in between the EMT for the shade cloth. Next is the shade cloth. I've laid out the shade cloth. These are 12 by 12s. And I've connected them with tomato clips just so it would be real easy to take off at the end of the season. And both combined obviously is 12 by 24. So now I'm going to uh, put that up over the structure. The shade cloth is installed. And it's about 2 in the afternoon, 2.30, somewhere in there. And you can see the majority of it's covered. As the sun comes over more, it's going to go more this way and it'll block some more of this. The end down here especially the this row here is going to get covered very soon but because of the morning sun um, and, the, and to the point where it gets uh, this dark it's not going to get 
um, as much sun so I don't I don't need to have all that covered because it gets the morning sun so I've got 550 cord on each corner there to have the strength and then you see I have the supports that are tomato twine in there that can be easily replaced and then on the shed I've got four attachment points that carry the shade cloth from this support to about right here and in the middle I took two pieces or one piece of tomato twine and just connect it both pieces to this tomato cl twit um, clip that way when it if the wind when the wind billows this up it'll catch right here and it won't stretch it too badly so I've got two of those there I'm done with um, the shade cloth and um, get, keeping the sun the intense sun off of these plants uh, by adding the shade cloth and the support system for the shade cloth and I've done the watering system um, that's unique to this particular no weed garden. Thought I'd share with you guys. This is Brent. We'll see you later. How long do we gotta stay here for people we don't know in one life? All of the clothes are designed, fast cars, and who knows who? Yeah, I know what they wanna say. Me